we're back. In this video, I've probably said this on more than one video, saying this is probably the most important video. And if I have said that in the past, let me change my mind and say, this is the most important video. The reason I say that is I've lost money on mobile homes. Not often. I've lost money on like two, I think. And I can't directly think of it, but the two times that I can think of, see if you can guess why I lost money. Park managers. Park managers are very key piece to your mobile home investing business and while they're extremely key it is the one piece that you don't get to directly control let's say you have built a strong relationship with the park manager and you are investing in that park and all of a sudden that park manager is fired or they're replaced or they sell it now you're at the mercy of a new person it's not something i want you to sit there and get super overwhelmed with and think too far into but there is the 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 biggest risk, in my opinion, in mobile home, mobile home investing as notes go is your park managers. So that's what this whole class is going to be about. Do please excuse the, uh, how would I say that? Please excuse the aesthetics of my slides. I have been trying to do content creation for y'all for the last year and a half. And one of the biggest things that slow me down is trying to make all that stuff look pretty for you. While I like it to look pretty, I think ultimately getting this information to you is far more pretty, more, far more important than how pretty it looks. So I just just recently started really drilling back and saying, you know what? They don't have to be pretty. They just need to get the content. So if you're looking for pretty, maybe you can go back through. I'll give you my slides. You can clean them up for me and I'll reshoot. But honestly, as long as you can get to understand the content, that's what matters more than how pretty it looks. So these slides are going to be very plain because it makes my job easier. Whew, now that I've said all of that, whew, like I've said, man, the relationship with this park manager is going to make or break your business. You're going to need to be able to identify whether a park manager will allow you to invest the way you want to invest in their park. You're going to need to decide whether or not that park manager is somebody that you want to be doing business with, because ultimately that park manager is going to be your landlord. That park manager is the person that is renting you the ground that you have bought this mobile home on. And if that is what you're doing, you want to make sure you got a good relationship with that landlord. So interviewing the park manager is the most important aspect to this business because it's probably the biggest point of problem. So uh, let me think about that here for a second. Hmm. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. First impressions. First impressions are important. We've been told that our entire life. What I don't mean by first impressions with a park manager is showing up like suit and tie, rolling your Bentley. You're, you're not going to really be well received. And I'm not saying that in a negative fashion, but you're going to want to dress similar to the people that you're going to be working with. Maybe just one little step up above that so that way you come across as clean and professional. But you ultimately want to, when doing this, uh, come across as somebody they can relate to. So how do I how do I use first impressions? Uh, if you've ever read the book Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Caldini, Saldini, uh, one of the laws of influence is reciprocity. Reciprocity meaning if I do for you, the laws of social dynamics say that you should probably do something for me. Well, if I take a look at reciprocity and I use that into these terms, maybe I should show up with a gift. It doesn't have to be a big gift. Maybe I bring them a coffee. Maybe I bring them a cold Coke. Maybe I bring them a pack of cigarettes, some donuts, some lunch, whatever that is. But let's use that as the opportunity to break the ice and get them to open up the door and start talking to me. Once I get them to start talking to me, I don't want to just go in there and be like, hey, I want to buy a mobile home real cheap, fix it up, turn around, sell it on a note and make a lot of money. That is not how I'm not, that is not how I'm going to approach this conversation. That is all about me. That's me, 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 me. I want to find out and work with the park manager and show the park manager how they benefit from me. It's a totally different dynamic. So a lot of people are going to come in there with that concept of, hey, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. That is not our goal here. What we want to do is go in there and say, hey, park manager, man, I know that you You've got all these units. I drove through the park. I saw that you have 27 units here. I noticed that there were a couple of units that didn't look like they were in nearly as good of a condition as these other ones. Have those been problem units for you? Or what are your intentions with those units? That's an open-ended question. What 
are your intentions with those units? And I'm going to start getting that park manager to talk to me and get that park manager to tell me, oh man, they've been there for three years. They don't pay their rent on whatever, whatever, whatever. I want them to start talking. Now that I know that they've got a problem, I know what's going on there. I'm going to try and position myself to show how I can provide value to them. So let's say I do get the park manager to open up and be like, yeah, man, I'm just tired of that one. It's causing me all kinds of problems, man. Just blah, blah, blah. There's my opportunity to show up and be like, hey, I can solve this problem for you. So I might respond with something along the lines of like, well, if you know if it's for sale or if you're planning on taking it back or what, I don't know what you're planning on doing with it, but would there be a scenario where maybe I could purchase that unit and I, as part of purchasing that unit, I would promise to go in there and bring it up to your standards. Like, I don't know what your standards are. Do you have any like community standards as far as, you know, what color the skirting has to be? Do you have like colors of the houses? Do they have to have porches, fences? Like what, what would you want done to that house to make it say, you know what, I'd like to have that mobile home in my community. Well, if I can get the park manager to start telling me what they want that home to look like, and then I can explain to them and say, well, if you'd sell it to me, I'd be, or if you would allow me to purchase that, I could go through, do all those things that you just mentioned. And then whenever I finish and clean it up, if you don't mind, I'd like to turn around and resell it for a profit. I mean, that's kind of how I do business. I'm not going to say owner finance sale and all this other stuff. I'm just going to say, would you allow me to turn around and sell it for profit? And as long as they're okay and they say that, and then I was like, okay, well, what I would typically do is whenever I buy it, it'll go into my name and I'll hold it in my name while I do the repairs. And then when it comes time for me to sell it, I will sell it to them. I will actually transfer the title to them and I will just hold a lien on the title until they've got it paid off to me. There's some key things I said there, and I want to make sure that you caught them because they weren't accidents. Some of the things I said in there is I will transfer the title to them, and I will hold a lien on the title until it is paid off. The reason I said I will transfer the title to them is because most parks that I have worked with, not all, most parks that I have worked with do not allow renters in their parks. They want owner-occupied units within their parks. If they want owner-occupied units in their parks, and I start telling them, you know what, I'm gonna buy it, and then I'm gonna turn around and sell it to somebody else on payments. What they might be thinking is I'm gonna rent it. I need to make it very clear in my initial opening statement that there is no rent going on whatsoever. I will transfer the title to them, they will become the new owners of the home, and I will just hold a lien against it like I'm the bank and just collect payments on it until it's been paid off. I need to find out if they're cool with that, okay? so. Once I have found out that they're cool with that, they're like, yeah, you know what? If you're buying it and you know what? It does go into their name and they're actually owning the unit. I have no problems with that. In fact, I'm actually liking that. Well, then what I might need to do is start asking the park manager of some of the things I just discussed. I kind of skip between slides. But do you have any units in this park that you know of that I could buy? Whether that be sellers in the park or park owned units themselves. Do you have any units in this area that you think I could buy? I hope that conversation goes well. You know, they might say, yeah, they might say no, regardless of what they say though, as long as I know that they're okay with my investing model within their park, I'm going to want to put this park manager into some form of lead management and follow-up system. So that way, at least once every two weeks or so, I'm communicating with this park manager and for park managers that I feel like I've got a lot of rapport built with and that I want to do business with, um, I might stop by at least once a month show up with their favorite cup of coffee, show up with a pack of cigarettes. I had one park manager smoke Newports like, like all day long. I didn't have to know anything about this person at all. I walk in, see an ashtray. I see that she's smoking Newports the entire time I'm there. All I know is that the next time I showed up, guess what I did? I didn't ask her. I just stopped by a gas station, picked up a carton of Newports. And when I showed up to the park manager, I pop a, a carton of Newports on the table. Guess how that conversation went? I can promise you it went very well and we were able to start doing business together. Well, if I find a park manager that I feel like I can connect with and I really want to do business with, make sure that you take mental notes of these types of things. Not even mental notes. Take physical notes. Put that park manager into a follow-up system to where you're contacting them at least every two weeks. And for the parks that you really think you have a chance in, try and show up at least once a month and just pop in with a carton of Newports and say, hey, remember me? I'm still here. I still want to do business with you. How are we going to do business together? And what this is going to work out for you is a pipeline of park managers that remember that you are their resource for distressed assets, getting them cleaned up, 
managed so they can start collecting lot rent. If they have a vacant unit or they have somebody that's there that's not paying and all they're wanting to do is collect lot rent, you're their resource for that. Make sure you become their hero. Okay? I also need to know exactly what it is that they're going to allow in their park. And I've kind of just, through my casual conversation with you, kind of spoke across different slides and stuff like that. But this particular slide right here, um, one of the clear things that I'm trying to show here is don't let this come across like a script or an interview. It seems so unnatural. It seems so scripted because it is scripted. Try and go in there and just have a conversation with these people, man. Don't go in there and be like, hey, can I buy an owner finance a mobile home in here? Oh yeah, what type of units will you allow? Okay, do you allow pets? Okay, is it an age restricted park? No, okay. What size mobile homes? What's the minimum year? What color? Those are not conversations, that's just an interview. Don't go in there and interview these people. While you are there to find answers to those questions, try and make it sound more like a conversation. You know, just go in there and be like, hey man, what's up? How are you doing today? I see that you've been kind of busy. I see that you finally got the outside of that, you know, that unit over there painted. That's, that looks that looks really nice, man. How, how long did that take? Open up some level of rapport so you can get that conversation going and then move into the, some of the details. And once again, just let those details flow throughout the conversation. But some of these parks are gonna have park rules. I always wanna make sure I ask for a copy of their park rules and or at least a general understanding of what their standards are. If they don't have a copy, I need to know what their standards are. With those park rules, I might wanna keep those in a file folder, some sort of recording system so I know a little bit more about the park and I've got some previous information on it. But let me give you some insight onto one mobile home I bought. I bought that one on Teasley. I bought a home on Teasley. I bought it double wide i don't typically buy double wides but i got a really good deal on it the numbers look really good made the home look nice repainted the exterior of the home fixed any of the poor siding that was on there put new skirting on it repainted the front porch um went through did all that did some paint and carpet on the inside of the house it was a good looking home you know i paid eight thousand for it i probably put about two thousand into it and i was planning on around turning on selling it for about thirty to thirty eight thousand somewhere in that range so i was going to make you know twenty to thirty thousand dollars off of this off of this unit I get ready to turn around and sell it. And then the park manager is like, oh no, 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 no. We're not gonna allow any of that. You need to have at least X foot of flower beds. You need screens on the windows. I need you to replace the front door. I need you to put a new roof on. I need you to change the skirting because I don't like the color of your skirting. Wow, you wanna talk about a surprise. You do not wanna be that investor that finds out after you've done all this that this park manager is wanting you to do things. Now, fully disclosed, this park manager was uh, intentionally trying to mess my, mess my project up, and we'll talk more about that towards the end, and I'll give you a full detail on that and why this is so important to you. But park managers, you need to know the rules, you need to know the standards of their parks, and just do that through casual conversation. Okay? Referrals. Referrals, referrals, referrals. If we're looking at referrals... If the park is okay with this investing strategy, I, I would ask them for referrals of anyone in the park they think may be looking to sell. Offering to pay for referrals may give the manager some needed motivation next time a unit becomes available. Outside of just referrals from the park manager, ask the park manager, and this is what I was talking about on the marketing slide, you know, we're talking about doing bulletin boards, we're talking about door hangers. This would be a good time to ask the park manager and say like, hey, you like what I'm doing, you like what's going on. Do you mind if I put, you know, some some advertising here on your bulletin board saying I buy mobile homes? Or would you mind if I go around the park and drop some door hangers? Most park managers don't like you doing door hangers because what happens is those door hangers end up on the ground and then they end up all over their park. But still, ask, hey, can I go through and do some door hangers for you? And if they're cool, let that happen. Let them know, that, let them find out, if, find out if they're okay with you offering referrals. That park manager needs to be your best friend. And that's why I'm spending so much time standing here talking about park managers, park managers, park managers. It's because they're important. Concessions and follow-up. This is going to be an important slide. I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second and just get a big deep breath of air because like I've said more than once, I get nervous up here on camera. Concessions and follow-up follow-ups. I've started establishing these relationships with the park manager and I start getting this park manager to be super cool with me. I want to find out, hey, I noticed that you've got a 39 unit park here, but only 27 of those units are full. 
like meaning I've got a bunch of vacant pads. I've got 12 empty pads. Almost a third of your inventory is sitting vacant. Would you like to fill those vacant spots up with new mobile homes? It's not going to be often the department manager is going to be like, no, I don't really want to maximize my, 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 my asset here. I'd much rather just leave it vacant. Why is a park manager going to have empty pads, though? Maybe that park manager is undercapitalized. They don't have the money to buy units to bring in. Maybe that park manager, you know, is just poorly managing their park and they don't really care anymore. If that's the case, then you might want to go into the academy and sign out if we've got the mobile home park investing course. You go check that out so you can learn how to buy mobile home parks. But if I see a mobile home park that has a bunch of vacant pads and they're not really filling them back up, that sounds like opportunity to me to buy the park itself. But we're not talking about parks today. We're talking about mobile home units. So if I know that there's empty units or if I know that there's empty lots, how can I be a help to that park manager? Well, here's some things that I'm going to want to do. I'm going to want to find out if that park manager will pay me or pay for the move to get a new, a new mobile home in. Like they, the park manager, might, I might say, so I, I noticed you got those 12 vacant lots out there. What are you doing to fill them up? And then I'll, I'll, I'll feel, fill out their answer, see what they got to say. And then I might follow back up to that and say, well, I get access to mobile homes all the time. Quite often I find them that they're on land and they have to be moved. Would you be okay with me moving them to your park? Boom. Would you be okay with me moving these homes to your park? Okay. Not many of them are going to say no. But what I do need to find out is what is the max age of a home? And what types of homes will you or will you not allow? Some of them might say, well, they have to have a pitched roof and they have to be vinyl siding. Somebody else might say, well, it needs to be at least 2003 or newer. Some of them might say, I don't really give a damn what you're bringing. I'm just glad that you're bringing it in. You know, that's going to kind of tell you what kind of park it is. And you need to be aware that, you know, if the park manager is that desperate, you might be in some trouble. Not necessarily in some trouble, but there's opportunity there that you could capitalize on. What else could we possibly do? All right, well, if you're gonna allow me to bring it in, would you potentially be willing to pay for the move? You know, if it's gonna cost me $2,000 to bring it in, would you be willing to pay that $2,000? Some of them might say, well, I'll pay for half of it. Some might say, no, I ain't gonna pay for any of it. And other ones might say, sure, I'll gladly pay for it, but you'll never know if you don't ask. And what's kind of cool is you can find out and gauge a little bit about the park itself. It's like, you know, if they're willing to pay, well, maybe they do have a little bit of capital there. If they're not willing to pay, maybe they're stingy. I'm not saying stingy, but you know, maybe they're not, they're not interested in putting any of that money out, but maybe they're also undercapitalized. But I need to find these things out. And if they're not willing to pay for the move, could I possibly negotiate discounted or free lot rent for bringing the home in? So it's like, so instead of them having to come out of pocket, because let's say it is an undercapitalized park and they don't have two or three thousand dollars just sitting around to pay you to move a mobile home in. What if I pay to move the mobile home in and instead of them charging me lot rent at $300 a month for the first six months, I can just say, hey, would you be willing to give me the first six months of lot rent for free if I bring a mobile home in? It's not bringing in any income right now. And if I bring a unit in, that'll start generating income for you in the future. But would you give me this first six months of rent for free so I can recoup some of my costs to move? Here's some you know, thoughts on how you might be able to work with these people. So let's take it another step further. We've talked about park manager paying for the move. If we've done like I talked in our marketing class on the marketing side of mobile homes, and I've started working with asset managers, repo guys, mobile home movers. If I get a mobile home mover call me up and like, hey, I got a 1988 wood frame uh, shingle roof that I'm trying to get rid of. It needs some repairs. I ended up getting it off the seller for two grand. Uh, are you interested in it? I'll be like, two grand, blah, blah, blah. Can you shoot me over some pictures? Yeah, I'd be interested in it. Can I get you to move it over to Kiever East for me real quick? Because I got a relationship with that park manager and that park manager allowed me to put that unit in their park. Well, if I get the mobile home mover that's already got it on their, on their, on their, on their rig, and all I have to do is pay him the $2,000 for the unit. I don't even have to pay him to move it. Well, this is relationship building here. And I get him to take it over to Kiever East. And then Kiever East turns around and gives me free lot rent for the next six months because I brought a new unit into there. I essentially got that mobile home for free. And this is how we start using our relationships and our network marketing and our thought processes to build a business around this and start creating opportunities that you wouldn't have seen before. So that's what we're going to do. 
And then once we get done with this mobile home park, we start talking to this park manager, I need to make sure that they're okay with me following up and that they're okay with me doing that business. And I'm just going to continually and continually and continually work with this park, follow up and make sure that they're okay with me doing business in their park because park managers are going to be the lifeblood of your business as you continue moving forward. So the keys to success is network with as many park managers as you can over time and developing relationships should be your first priority when getting started. You need to be talking to at least four or five park managers a week. And by the time you are done, by the end of a month or two, you need to have a list of 35, 40, 50 different park managers that you're calling on, following up with every couple of weeks, driving to, saying, hey, here's your pack of Newports. Hey, here's your Dunkin' Donuts. You do these things, and this business will start thriving for you. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. Remember, this is brought to you by Propelio.com, your software source for all things real estate investing. Make sure to check us out. If it's not for you, please do us the favor, though, and tell us all your friends. Have a good day.